Hello, everybody. As you heard, my name is Yolanda. I'm married to Kevin. I have four children. I know I don't look that old. Um, to remember the names is quite a challenge for me, so they're called Childs 1, 2, 3, and 4. They do have names that come out when I'm angry, but anyway. Um, but tonight, I want to speak to you about words and words that bring us life. And one of the stories, or one of my favorite all-time stories, is about a lady named Dr. Maya Angelou. Who has heard of her, or am I speaking to you? Okay. So now, Dr. Angelou was a writer. She was a poet. She was a playwright. She fought for the civil rights movement in America alongside Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. We've heard of those people, right? Bill Clinton, at his presidential inauguration in 1993, asked her to read one of her poems, the first woman to do so in 30 years, a black woman with a white president being inaugurated. Just bear that in mind. She wrote over seven books, over 150 poems, numerous plays and TV shows. She won a Grammy. Don't ask me what for, but she did. <laughs> Just because I can't remember. Um, was nominated for many Tony Awards. She was given PhDs and doctorates. Um, she was a motivational speaker. And I know Michael mentioned Oprah. She actually was Oprah's mentor as well. So I think we can safely say that this woman was a loud voice in modern day America, a loud, influential voice. But before I carry on talking about her, I want to tell you another story about a young little girl called Annie Johnson. Annie Johnson was born in 1928. Um, she had a brother who was a year older than her, and they were raised by their grandmother. When Annie was five, she and her brother went and lived with their mom for a couple of years for whatever reason. And while she was there, she was raped by the mother's boyfriend. They then reported, her to, reported the boyfriend to the police. The police arrested him. And 24 hours later, they released him because it was, in those days, a silly crime. Within a few days, her uncles had killed him. And they came home and said, we have taken revenge, you're okay. But all that happened was, she then convinced herself that her words had killed this man. And so for the next five years, she did not utter a sound. She was completely mute. And later on in life, she said this. She said, I thought my voice killed him. I killed that man because I told his name. And then I thought that I would never speak again because my voice could kill anyone. So after going back to live with her grandmother, her and her brother then were sent back to the granny. Annie, for the next five years, didn't say a word. And the granny, her brother, and a teacher at the school spent five years speaking life into this child. They taught her the love of books. They read poetry to her. They taught her Shakespeare. They just continued to affirm her and affirm her and affirm her until she started speaking again. And this young lady, Annie Johnson, grew up to write 150 poems over seven books, numerous plays and TV shows. She won Grammys and Tony Awards. She spoke at a presidential inauguration and she changed her name from Annie Johnson to Maya Angelou. And this is what I wanna to say to you, is that when we have a destiny, when we have been called to something, God is gonna make it happen, no matter, how it, no matter how he goes about doing that. And there's two things I want you to take out of the story, one, your circle is important. The people you surround yourself with are important. And your words matter very much. Uh, we have a family joke with the Nulls that you're either in the circle of trust or you're out of the circle of trust. We won't tell you what movie that's from. <laughs> but this is what I want to say, is that when we are in our circle, when we are in our area of influence, are we bringing kindness and wisdom and encouragement and uplifting, or are we breaking down? When, when the children are growing up, because they are all adults now, I survived childhood, guys. Just I want you to know, that's a big thing for me. Um, we try to instill in our, in our children that their words matter, that whenever possible, to speak life 
into their circle, to always speak kindness and encouragement. Did they get it right? No. I clearly remember dropping my son off at a cricket match, and as he got out the car, I said to him, be kind, booby. And he looked at me and he said, Mom, this is a dog-eat-dog world. There is no time for kindness. I clearly remember it. He was 10. I mean, <laughs> it shouldn't have been an issue, but it was apparently. But did we instill it into their subconscious that they are always kind? And I truly hope so that we did. In Proverbs 18 verse 21, the scripture says, Our words have the power to build people up and give them life or tear people down and bring them death. And my question to you today is, which one are you doing? Are you building up and bringing life, or are you speaking death into situations? See, but this is the thing, guys, is that we have the source of life at our fingertips. We can open an iPad, open our Bible, pick up an actual Bible. I know the young people struggle what that is. It's a book <laughs> with pages. We can do that. We, are, we have so much access to the actual living word of God. And the, th the more we read and spend time in that word, the more that that is going to come out. The question is this. You know, often parents used to say to, to the children, don't do as I do, do as I say. Remember that. But also, I'm going to ask you this question. Who said that? I'm going to ask you this question. When you are poked, what comes out? And the more time we spend in the word, the more the word is going to come out of us. The more we are going to influence our people, the more we are going to be encouragers and uplifters. And that is a wonderful place to be. John 1 verse 1 to 4 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. And I want to encourage us this week. Make a point of finding moments to uplift people. We have a friend, Kevin van Eck. He always used to say, catch people in the act of doing good. So I'm giving you a challenge this week. Catch people in the act of doing good to encourage them. Catch people in the act of encouraging so that you can encourage them. And I will guarantee you that your life, your world, your circle of influence, your circle of trust will change for the better. And just like a stone that we throw in a lake that causes a blob, but the ripples are forever, that it happens when we start speaking life into people. So I encourage you to do that.